So everyone who's here and everyone who um, isn't able to join, but we'll see this video later. Today, we're going to be going over another one of our huts development opportunities. And just as a refresher, the way that we think about these are this is an opportunity for us to put together all the pieces that go into um, creating a new destination property, which includes having a raw piece of land, improving that piece of land, designing for it, um, putting pricing together for it, onboarding a contractor for it. And so in our typical studio sequence, um, we are going through each of those steps and working with our clients to kind of string together all the components that are required to bring together a property. In our development opportunities, we've done some of that heavy lifting up front. We have um, identified a parcel that we think is an excellent fit for our approach and our design aesthetic and our um, and our standards. We've figured out how we would develop that property, what the uh, target pricing would be. And so it leaves some opportunity for modifications and changes. But the idea is that um, we've done a lot of the heavy lifting uh, every on the design and planning side. And sort of all that's left is to find a really great buyer who wants to go forward with this project with us. And so hopefully of the folks who are on the, the webinar right now, maybe you're out there and this is a really exciting project for you. So let me walk through the uh, stone wall house, as we've termed it, um, and go through each piece of this. Here we are looking at Google Earth um, or Google Maps, uh, where we've identified the parcel. Let me zoom in. We're on Yawn Road, which is a um, sort of higher altitude, rural road, really, really lightly trafficked. The parcel is uh, about three and a half acres, largely wooded. And just zooming out, if you're not familiar with this area, it's in Sullivan County in the Western Catskills. You can start to see some towns come into view. Youngsville, Jeffersonville, Calicoon, Livingston Manor, zooming out a little bit further along the left side here from Checkton, Calicoon, we have the Delaware River. As we zoom out a little further on the right side, start to see the uh, large reservoirs, the Willow Weemock Wild Forest, um, the Great Northern Catskills. And so that's a really uh, wonderfully situated property that when you zoom in, it's near some really fantastic towns with excellent amenities. And when you zoom out a little bit further, see start to see some of the natural world that it sits within, both mountains and river, and not too far from Delaware River, and also not much more than a day trip to get out to um, do activities along the Hudson and back. And so really, really wonderful setting. And so like all of our development opportunities, you can find them at the bottom of uh, huts.com in our footer or to see developments. I'll kind of go through this the same way uh, you might. And you can see our development opportunities are organized by price point from below 300 to 300 to 600, 600 to 900, and 900 to 1.2 million. And trying to design um, opportunities for everyone out there and to meet your price point, but also your, your goals for your property. And so let me zoom down here to the Stonewall House and open this up. And so here we are looking at the each of the pieces of this of this property. And the way that we organize our development opportunities, the way that we think about kind of going through responsible development on on the project, it's in a series of phases that there's acquisition of land, there's improvement of the land, or the uh, entitling the property, getting it permitted, um, and then construction. And so at each one of those phases, there's uh, capital expenditures is a cost that goes into advancing the project, but ideally you're producing value as you go. And that's one of the things that um, we're really committed to as your development partner through these projects is that you're always right side up on the project, that the math always, always works. And so this project is one where the total cost that we see is anticipated uh, build costs and fees of around $665,000, including land acquisition improvement and, and build cost. that our intent is to produce around $120,000 of value. And that conservatively, if rental is part of your program, it, it's a cash flowing property that can produce around $6,400 a month, um, not, um, not reducing taxes and, and maintenance costs, both of which are quite reasonable for this project. 
So coming down, just a kind of quick look at, at this house type. This is based on our um, medium bar, which is typically a um, three bedroom, two bath uh, project with a uh, principal suite above in the loft. We've modified this one to operate as a three bedroom, two bath, um, and really as a two story home. And so one of the defining features of this property is that you have this amazing stone wall running all through the property. And it's one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we integrate fully, um, that the stone wall becomes a defining feature of, of this place. And so it's a really lovely forested lot, minimal undergrowth. Um, and you drive up along the stone wall on one side, walk down a walkway to the other, and we're going to break the stone wall to accommodate the width of the house and then have the house kind of right in, on center between uh, two sides of the stone wall. So when you look one side through the living kitchen dining space, it's kind of fully surrounded in glass. You'll see the stone wall and you look on the other side, you'll see the stone wall continue. It's almost as if the wall is sort of running directly through the house. And so like all of our development opportunities, we kind of imagine someone for it. Um, doesn't have to be exactly this person, but it's we we talk to a lot of people at, at Hudson understand a lot of use cases. And so obviously anyone who finds this property exciting um, can move forward with it. But we think it's a really great fit for, um, say, a, uh, uh, a young family looking for a weekend retreat, um, uh, a place outside of the city within within two hours um, that offers great outdoor opportunities, great towns nearby, um, isn't totally off uh, off the beaten track, um, rents well, is accessible. And so it has this great sort of space quality of really having what feel like two kids rooms or two guest rooms and then a principal suite. And it feels like kind of a small family house. So the location here is off of Yon Road. Like, like I said, it's a fantastic rural road, incredibly quiet. It runs through and, and by between Calicoon and, and, um, and Livingston Manor, which is sort of known for its outdoor activities, known as sort of the gateway into the Catskills and sits in the, the, um, the western foothills of the Catskills. And from the lot, particularly in the winter, you get um, pretty broad views towards the um, towards the west and pick up ridge line and um, some really great mountain views. The lot itself, we have already started to improve, and there's a driveway in place already that would be, um, uh, which is a major benefit that allows construction to start quickly. Um, the access is already there um, for ground improvements like well and septic and uh, and power, and um, it allows you to start um, driving directly up to the site uh, immediately. Let's look at some of the numbers in our spreadsheet for this project, or what what's called a performa for the development. And so the first piece that you see on a performa is the acquisition cost. And here we're looking at an acquisition cost of around $80,000 for this um, semi-improved lot um, approaching four acres um, wooded with, with some amount of improvements and, and preparation in place. It's also a lot that we know very well and are kind of sure of its developability. That's one of the major risks with new construction and, and land acquisition is that is this land that I'm that I'm sourcing going to work for what I have in mind? And this is a lot where we are sure of how it's going to operate um, because we're very familiar with the parcel. We understand how the percolation tests have gone on it. Um, we actually help to subdivide this lot um, and and secure its status as a standalone lot and help to manage the construction of the driveway. And so it's a place that we know very very well. So you'll acquire the lot. And then move into land improvement. Here you can see the access uh, kind of coming up into the forest um, off of Yon Road for the driveway. And so there's a driveway already in place, but some things that will have to be done include um, maybe some light tree clearing, uh, construction of a well, construction of a septic, and running power up to the site, subterranean power. These are these are real costs. This is not uh, this is not estimates. We have a very good sense of what. Your improvement costs will be to um, uh, prepare the site for construction. And in blue, you see what uh, Hudson's fees will be to help manage this process, both on the design side, the documentation side, securing permitting, and um, managing the construction effort. And so at this point, you've got a really beautiful lot on Yon Road. 
you have an improved lot and you've spent around $140,000 on that exercise um, and ideally produce some equity in it. Now you have a more valuable parcel because you've made the place more shovel ready. And that matters quite a lot in the land development process. And so at this point, you should be uh, right side up on the project that the value of the lot has improved more than the investment that you put into it. Let's move into the fun part, which is designing and building the place. And so we have accounted in for in, in this project, utilizing this modified medium bar that um, we think is a really excellent fit for the for the project. We're open to alternatives, but this is one where we can we we know the cost quite well. We know that it works with with the property, and we think it's a kind of fantastic for this use case. And we find that all the numbers here are defensible because we know um, we know this standard quite well. And so, what you can see in the site plan already is this idea that the stone wall runs up and around the lot and turns the corner in this really neat kind of ninety degree angle. And we are placing the uh, the house to kind of cross right uh, right between it and integrating the stone wall as part of the experience of the property. And so looking at the um, the floor plan, here you can see that um, how this is organized, that there's a main entry area where you have um, two guest rooms or kid, kids rooms, but both um, both fit queen size beds quite comfortably a uh, full-size uh, three-piece bath down below, um, storage for all outside area pieces, operates as a vestibule in the transition from indoors to outdoors, and then this, this great living kitchen dining space integrated with full um, vaulted ceilings, double height space, full staircase going up to what is essentially a second floor with a uh, dedicated working space um, that has this great moment of overlooking into the living kitchen dining, and then a principal suite above with an additional bathroom, full storage, um, great closet space, and skylights above. And so some views of how this place sits within, um, within the property that you get always this sort of nice moments of symmetry between the uh, the wall, the land, and um, the kind of simple the simple form and elevation of the house. Similarly, on entrance, turning the corner along the wall to to access the property, and kind of spanning between these forested uh, forested parcel on either side. And so, on the home side, we always think about construction sort of in two pieces. The first is shell costs. That imagine, look around in your apartment or your house that you're sitting in right now. And uh, remove the the flooring, remove the appliances, remove the cabinetry and millwork and tile and lighting fixtures. And then you're in a conditioned shell. It's a place that's insulated. It's a place that's uh, heated and cooled. Um, it has all of its exterior finishes in place. Um, and that's really the shell cost. And a lot of this, you can't really control. It's largely commodified pricing. You're not going to change the price of lumber or concrete. But... Maybe there's some movement there in, in windows or um, certainly roofing selections, but um, it's a little bit more of a fixed cost. And here we're imagining this is going to be built in around $250 a square foot. Can has been sneaking up a little bit, could be upwards of $275 a square foot uh, at the time of construction. Then fixtures and finishes, this is the place where you do have some control. In this case, we've kind of accounted for a certain set of selections. It'll be around $100 to $110 per square foot. You can go upmarket in those selections, particularly if you're imagining this can be my full-time home and I'm not going to have renters and I durability is less of an issue, turnover is less of an issue, and I want to think about um, some some finer finishes. That that that's totally fine. But in this example, in this model, we've um, we've utilized hundred dollars per square foot as our working estimate. And then through this period, we would have gone through as huts in uh, finalizing the design and any additional modifications or changes you might want to make to this project to um, get it to um, fit your, your lifestyle or any kind of unique requirements you might have other than what we've imagined for this property. Um, we would have gone through and produced all of the documentation for permitting, for final pricing and construction, um, and anything required by your bank if you chose to go for bank financing. Um, and would have onboarded our contractor and then helped in managing the construction process. And we would have had a design and development fee of around $45,000 through that period for all the design work documentation and, and construction coordination. 
And so at this point, you have improved a lot. You have built the house from the ground up at um, around $375 square foot or so, um, and um, spent around $660,000 and produced quite a bit of value that this is a property that looking at some of the prevailing pricing for new construction in the area for this kind of lot, we think it's reasonable to say that the place might be worth around 775 upwards of 800 grand in um, in stored value um, and potential resale value. And so quite a bit of equity has been sort of forced into the project up front. That's one of the benefits of new construction is that you're always hoping to arbitrage the cost of construction against the value that you're creating. And that's one of the things as your design and development partner through um, any of HUD's, HUD's processes in particular, particularly with these development opportunities, we always want to make sure is happening that the project is right side up through each one of these steps. And then looking at the last bit, now you have this fantastic rental property in a highly desirable area if you choose to rent it and using a very conservative model of this renting for $400 per night, which I think is um, quite low annualized relative to what it could be um, at uh, essentially 50% occupancy, you're producing $6,400 a month, which is going to be a cash flow positive property. Um, I'm producing around around $76,000 a, uh, a year at this conservative estimate. And so that's kind of the full picture of how we think about developments, both on the, in this case, the design side, how have we gone through and made a unique place that is utilizing the uh, the knowns of our standards, utilizing what makes this lot special, which I think is the integration of the forest, integration of the stone wall, um, but breaking down each of the pieces along the way. What are the, as transparently as possible, what are the real costs that you're going to hit as you go through? Um, this is also an area in the world where if you guys have driven around through Sullivan County, you might have seen lots of um, hot signs around in, in various con uh, construction sites at various levels of completion. Um, it's an area of the world where we really know it quite well. We we really know um, the, the permitting requirements. We have a very good understanding of uh, both uh, hard costs and materials and uh, soft costs on labor um, and have... Um, made plenty of mistakes previously to be able to not bring them into any future projects that we do in this area. And um, so we have a really good handle on um, how to smoothly run this project. And so, you know, in the end, this is a place that I think is the right house type for the right location um, in the on the right lot um, at a price point that I think uh, makes sense. And um, is a development opportunity that in our um, kind of envisioning of it, I think, is uh, is a quite desirable one. I think um, uh, hopefully somebody out there sees sees that as well. And so let me do one more thing. Just if you go to the studio section portfolio uh, on our site, you can see the stone wall house as something we've started to block out and it has some additional views floor plans that we already went through, but also additional exterior views. How are we going to take advantage of um, glass to expand the uh, sense of indoor outdoors? How are we going to utilize deck and, and hardscape and softscape areas outside of the house to create some outdoor rooms that extend the functional usable space? Um, taking a look at some of the material direction deck space that'll include both dedicated lounge area and more than enough space for outdoor dining. View from above where you get this great moment of the kind of wall turning the corner. And then the this kind of special interior moment I described before being in this workspace, looking down over the living kitchen dining, um, seeing the living space below in the uh, under the uh, full height vaulted ceiling with the um, mantle and fireplace and flue going kind of straight up the space and then surrounded by glass on, on four sides, really kind of tucked into the forest and um, under the canopy of the trees above. Some of the material palette and finished qualities for the selections that we've made for the interior. And then looking back the other direction from the fireplace towards the uh, living room, dining, uh, kitchen space, back towards the guest bedrooms underneath the loft space, and then looking at the, the loft above. And then up into that principal suite that is just a really um, 
special treehouse feeling that you're in this space 16 18 feet off the ground um looking up through the skylight seeing the tree canopy above um taking in the sounds of um birds and really nothing else in um in the forest on yon road and so again it's a place where we've started to do quite a bit of work on it and have a very good sense of how this property would work and and are excited to work with somebody out there on helping to develop it so let me stop there. I'll, I'll open it up for QA. Um, I see that some people have already started to write in, and I'll leave this open for as long as questions come in. Will writes, uh, do you have lending partners? Um, and do you have ROI models that show range of returns um, with a softening rental market should one occur in three to four years? I mean, well, that's something we could particularly be... Um, the rental side of the performa, that's a projection we could definitely work through with you. Um, and but one of our takes here is how conservative can we be from the get go? And so I think that we're using a nightly rental rate that is probably 65 percent of market. Um, I think it's reasonable to say that you could that 550 could be 550, 600 dollars. And we're using 400 for our nightly rental rate uh, model. So that's quite conservative. We're also using 50, 55% occupancy, which is quite low. Um, that's assuming that the buyer here is going to utilize it a decent amount themselves as well. But if the goal was to really make it a pure rental property, I think you'd be targeting something like 20, 22, 24 nights a month. Um, and that would change your math. And so I think that the model that we're already using is sort of assuming probably the softest conditions there could be. Uh, Samantha writes, would you be able to plan as part of the construction for additional hut structures? Absolutely. Um, and think about um, additional accessory dwellings or outbuildings or, um, say, garage space that has a in-law suite. And this is a lot that allows for some of those additional structures. And some of the planning we would want to go through is making sure that the power supply is uh, sufficient to support any uh, current or future outbuildings. And that the septic is designed to support um, as many bedrooms as uh, are going to be accounted for in um, on, on the Board of Health plan. Matthew writes, would you build a hut in New Hampshire? We're, we're working on projects in New Hampshire and, and Vermont and, and Maine, Matthew. So, um, yeah, let's talk about your project and shoot us a note and we'd be happy to talk about yours. Uh, Joe writes, could you give us an idea of timeline for each phase? Um, so acquisition will be more or less immediate. Right. And then um, improvements would be um, so there's a question on improvements, whether you pay for them out of pocket or you make them part of your construction loan. This kind of depends on your financing condition. One of the things we advise a lot of our clients on whether you should improve the value of your lot to um, use your lot as part of your basically make your lot your down payment for your construction loan. In, in which case we would um, try to move the well and septic along uh, quite quite quickly up front. And then your your build timeline from there, six months is a really good estimate here, um, depending on time of year. But I would utilize six, six months as a construction time frame. Um, on this side, is the drive access through another private property? Uh, no, it's that the, the driveway continues further up onto uh, another lot where you will have a right-of-way agreement with a with lot behind this one. So one of the things we're hoping to do with this, with this property and all of our development opportunities is actually set times to tour the property together, that anyone who is on this, uh, this webinar or any of our development opportunity webinars that um, we'll send out to um, all of the participants and anyone interested a time to view the property, see it in person, uh, walk through it with uh, with me or another person from the Huts team. Um, so it kind of brings the place to life. As much as we try to uh, visualize and answer questions through the development opportunities, um, detail pages on our site, um, through social, through anything we can. It's it's hard to replace the value of being there. And so um, we want to make sure that we can bring that same level of um, kind of bridging the gap between this, this piece of land as it stands and the vision that we have for it in the future. I um, mean, what's nice in this area is there's also opportunities to kind of drive by some other hut sites and see, see projects in progress or different various levels of completion. You can sort of 
get a sense of how that finished product might actually might actually sit. Uh, Samantha writes basements in any of your plans for sure. Um, this one could be a pretty good candidate for that, both because of the slope and the uh, soil condition. Um, and so um, probably 40% of the houses that we're working on right now have full basement plans, um, either out of requirement or because of great additional space that is relative to like a crawl space basement is an incremental cost difference. But now all of a sudden you've got an, an additional 800,000 square feet of storage down below. Joe asked, does Hutz already own the site? Is due diligence complete? We don't own the project. Uh, we don't own the site. Um, it is owned by a, uh, a client of ours and we've completed the due diligence on the, on the property. We've the permitting requirements, the land use and zoning requirements, um, percolation tests, um, septic feasibility. The, this we have a very, very good sense that this project um, uh, will stand up and and uh, work across permitting and any review process. We really are looking forward to bring what we think is an incredibly special place to life. Um, and again, it's a it's a, it's a lot and location and house type and pricing and approach that we really believe in. And we're excited to, to work with somebody out there um, on making it a reality. Thank you so much to everyone and uh, look out for a follow-up from us soon.